Okay, so okay, thanks for having me here. Uh, actually, I'm the host. Host, so yeah. Okay, so yeah. Anyways, so today I'll be talking about the modern data stack in motion. Um, so well, I'm currently running a, a startup called Writing with Labs, but uh, apparently I'm not talking about the writing lab. Uh, uh, what are we doing as this, uh, in this talk? And I'm actually talking about modern data stack and why? Because we, yeah, if you if you know. Uh, if you if you check our website page, well, I mean the meetup page, you will see that okay, the the theme of the the, the meetup is actually the modern data stack, right? But nobody talks about the more, what is modern data stack, right? So today I will be talking about okay, what indeed is modern data stack? Uh, um, yeah, so yeah, I'm um, again. Well, I'm the I'm the founder and the CEO of uh, Resume Web Labs. And uh, before starting this co company, I was a software engineer at Telemetry Redshift and. Uh, uh, Two years at uh, IBM Research Hamilton, and I'm obtained my PhD from National University of Singapore, and my actually my advisor is here, right? So I also spent a few, uh, yeah, a few time uh, at Cambridge mm -hmm. University. Because for the 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 is the right. And, and uh, we want to better promote the product, so we just uh, change the name to be the, I mean, the company name to be exactly the same as a, as a product name. So that's what, yeah, there's no confusion at all, right? So we founded this startup in January 2021, last year during the call. And this, uh, 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 time zones and we are uh, we, we are in, in Singapore it's just a actually uh, we are building a database system called the writing wave wave so yeah but like we're not about the database system so I'm asking about this and my you know why because of the theme of the uh of the of the meetup is more uh what well, the modern data stack is a really nice part of it. So then why why starting investing in well, the main reason again where is everyone is modern data stack. So as a as a as a founder that I think I have to uh, yeah talk about it. Right. Like so when we look at well, how product like how to how to brand or uh, how, how to how to push our product into uh, to, into I treat this case uh, where uh, is that okay well actually everyone is talking about this concept everyone is to connect their own product with that stack. So if you see, uh, if you see, well, I mean, if you if you search more than that stack, then we'll find uh, Google, I think, uh, Ellen, uh, actually, uh, Snowflow, by right, uh, Brother Stack, and many other startups. And search what is more than their stack, and you have actually the first page of the, uh, the Google research. Uh, Google search, um, the every the other this find you find the uh, that stack. So, so if you think this really well, wondering where the this commodity is just a password for for really for marketing purpose. Well, well, I think well after doing some research, I find that, that well, the answer is probably no. In the why? So let's just uh just uh, go back to a very basic question. What is modern data stack? Well, the, the modern data stack by definition is the is actually a suit of tools used for the data integration. The so-called in uh, the data integration is actually the process of combining data from multiple data resources to create a unified set of um, uh, information for both the operational and the and the, the analytical uses. So to put put in another way. The, more, the data stack, so called the data stack, is a collection of software that help us to extract the knowledge from the data sources. 
but 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 why modern data stack is so modern? Why not just call it modern? Um, why not just call it probably the technical stack or data stack? Why we call it modern data stack? Well, to answer this question, let's just uh, look at uh, look at uh, or think of how we can extract the insights from the data twenty years ago. So, well, twenty years ago, there's no cloud and there's no 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 big data, right? And there's no Uber, LinkedIn, no no those were data 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 driven companies. And what we had what we had is actually the um the, a few database systems or a few a few database vendors such as IBM, such as uh, DB2, such as the uh, yeah IBM DB2, such as Oracle, like uh, or such as uh, micro, uh, Microsoft SQL Server. And to extract the insights from the data, the thing we could do is actually to import our data from the data sources to the database systems and then write a certain program to extract the knowledge from the database it sounds quite simple right but unfortunately uh it, it was not and actually this process is, can be super expensive you know why because for the main reason is that well if you want to purchase any database at that time the thing is that well, I think it's not as simple as just putting some licenses from the uh, from the little vendors. In fact, you will have to uh, if you are if you are uh, if you are a big company, then probably you have to purchase the mainframe directly from those vendors. And those machines or those uh, the, uh, the, those machine racks can, can actually cost a lot of money, and it can be super difficult to maintain and operate. And more than that. The companies also need to uh, hire a group of uh, dedicated DBA, uh, DBAs, uh, database administrators, to maintain and tune the database for the users. And other than that, the companies also need to think about how we can hire uh, uh, to uh, how, 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 we, how we can hire a group of people and a group of engineers to extract, transform, and load the data from the data sources, and figure out how to write the programs to extract the insights from the database systems. And just, we can just think of the, uh, uh, the, the efforts of purchasing machines, operating these machines, hiring a group of engineers, hiring a group, uh, 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 hiring the DB teams. You will find that it can actually cost a lot of money and a lot of energy. So not every company can account for that. Actually, only, only banks and the large companies can afford uh, running database systems. But luckily, everything just, ch uh, just changed in the year 20, 2012. And in this year, what happened? So Redshift was born in this year. Redshift is a cloud-based data warehouse systems. Uh, actually, the cl no cloud data, uh, Cloud data, uh, cloud based data warehouse. And it is actually essentially the first cloud based data warehouse in the world. And Redshift changed the game by offering the powerful analytics at super low cost. So with Redshift, we can now totally completely redesign the data stack. So by replacing your on-prem database systems with Redshift, the companies no longer need to purchase the machines from directly from the data vendors, because well, all you uh, because the uh, because all the machines are hosted by AWS, and the only thing you need to you need to do is to put your data into the cloud. So there's no more in-house. Uh, so in that uh, in that way, there's no more need to maintain the in-house clusters. And moreover, the company also can save the budget for hiring a dedicated DBA team and as well as an engineering team, because where the Redshift will maintain, operate, and tune the database for you. And Redshift is not just cheap, but also super fast. Okay. Uh, probably, uh, probably people will say that they probably some, there are some data warehouse, uh, data warehouses are, that are much, much faster than Redshift. But think of the year twenty twelve. The only thing you can get is Redshift. So at that time, Redshift is already cheap enough, and it's already fast enough. So it can completely change the way the how we can measure data. So conventionally, 
the engineers need to build the data pipelines, their sources into the data warehouses. And the data pipeline is developing is developed to clean and process the data to make sure into the data house. It's nice and clean and it's easy to query. But while well, it simplifies the data, it doesn't really uh, it it does actually put a lot of burden onto your data engineers because where they need to be responsible to build and maintain the data pipeline. Just a simple scenario that, okay, we want to just extract a, uh, extract a different columns from the data. The data engineers need to think about, about how, to, how to rewrite the data pipeline from scratch. Shift. Instead of transforming the raw data into the structured data before loading into a database or data warehouse, you can actually load a uh, bulk load. So this means that through the redshift or the data warehouse do not really only structure uh, only so store your raw data. And this was not possible 20 years ago because first, 20, uh, in 20 years ago, storing the data can be super expensive because if you want to store large amount of data, you will need to purchase a, a lot of machines on your own. And second, the, at the time, the database is not powerful enough to deal with the data transformation. And with Redshift, you can you can put all your uh put you can put all your transformation workload into the data warehouse uh, into into the Redshift, so that we uh, so and the Redshift is already cheap enough and powerful enough. That means that it can save you a lot of energy to process it. So because of this, we are now witnessing the birth of a new start such as so five chain uh the dbt and the mini intelligence side we're also seeing as a metal base and the uh, super site and many others that can try to simplify the process the modern data step actually makes the data management simpler so in the modern data stack, this, again, to summarize, the more the in data stack, more new tools to help simplify, to help simplify the management. But what's the next for modern data stack? And what do we bet on the modern data stack? Well, the question is, uh, the, 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 the answer is quite simple. We are, we are betting in the term uh, data in motion. People want to get real time inside. Because you are probably your and uh, probably your, your your Uber apps or your Grab web app, yeah, Grab apps. So they are actually continuously generating their data into the cloud, and they install in messenger systems such as the Kafka, Pausa, Red Panda, or the their, their lakes such as Hudi, Iceberg, and Delta Lake. So these messaging systems and the data lake systems will become the store new storage for the streaming data. And now we have the chance to build the new streaming systems or new computation systems that can continuously extract the insights from the, uh, from the store data, from the store streaming data. And constantly, this trend, uh, this trend was captured by a blog from N N yeah, AC3Z, the top VC found in the Bay. So compared to the data infra architecture they captured two years ago, the infra data deployed in the 20, uh, 20 in this year 
actually includes a few new stacks. That is the real time data analysis. And that's what we are doing, working on. So people may wonder that, well, okay, so we have the streaming systems, but actually there are a new, uh, another, uh, another technology called the OLAP database system. And both, uh, both the OLAP systems and streaming systems want to consume data from, from your messaging systems such as Kafka, and then process the data to support your real-time applications, such as the user-facing dashboard, monitoring, alerting, or some, something like continuous transformation. But what's the difference between the OLAP database systems? Well, it's actually better for the uh, better for ad hoc queries. You can think of the uh, OLAP systems like a system data and do computation, do ad hoc computations, of, and it does full computation. And it's better for, uh, uh, and adopts a user triggered processing model. So, in this way, it, uh, you know, this design means that well, it will be better and cheaper for interactive processing. But for streaming uh, streaming systems such as Writing Wave, such as KCODB from Confluent, uh, or such as Flink, these kind of systems are better uh, better for uh, for 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 pretty fun queries and these kind of systems adopt the incremental computation model and every time a new event comes in the computer will be triggered so for this kind of systems for the streaming systems they will be better and cheaper for processing continuous so if you want to answer queries like uh okay how many how many how many users use uber, uber apps or grab apps yesterday or uh, what's the uh, average mile do people uh do, do people drive every single day then probably overlap systems can can do a better job but if you want to answer questions like monitoring the top 30 longest trips in the last two hours or monitoring the top 10 hot, uh, hot zip code for pen, for passengers then probably you want to use the uh, use systems like Rising Wave, KCDB, or Flink. Okay, so how do we design Rising Wave? I'm not trying to dive deep into the te uh, technical details because, uh, uh, because well, if you want to, uh, uh, because well, if you want to do this, well, I think that well, I, I probably need to talk, uh, spend probably another thirty minutes to talk about the uh, the, the design design principles. But let's just think about for the, let's just think about for the, the, the guideline for designing such kind of, uh, such, for such kind of uh, streaming system. Well, the principle number one is, we want to make sure that well, the design of the uh, design of the system is simple enough so that where the users, every, all the, uh, every single user can use it without any headache. Compared to Flink, which was a big data system, Rising Wave target is not about where it's not just about where data engineers. They target uh, at the data analysts, data scientists, or even decision makers. But definitely, data engineers are powerful enough where they, they are talent. Uh, they, are, they, are, they are they are small enough to use Rising Wave. And why? Well, for Flink, it provides a Java-based API or the big data-based uh, big data style. SQL, uh, SQL, and it's fully depend on the JVM ecosystem as well as the uh, big data ecosystem. Which means that, well, if you want to operate a uh, Flink uh, uh, in your own data center or even in a cloud, you will need to operate all kinds of the big big data services such as uh, Zookeeper, HDFS, or some uh, or, or YAM. But for writing wave. Well, it's just a distributed system, distributed SQL, uh, SQL system, and it implements the Postgres SQL, which means that well, as long as you have the SQL, uh, as long as you have the uh, Postgres client, you can directly connect to Rising Wave and the operator uh, and and run queries there. And it's purely independent from the JVM ecosystem because it's completely built on. Uh, using, completely built from scratch using Rust. 
And to create a streaming job, the only thing you need to do is not to write some, some Java code. The only thing you need to do is to run the create materials view commands. And to support real-time applications, such as a user-facing dashboard, you no longer need to combine two different systems, uh, such as Flink and Cassandra together. And instead, you can just uh, use Writing Web to handle both the compilation and the serving, uh, serving, uh, serving capability. The principle number two for designing Writing Web is to make sure that the system is affordable. So what it means? Well, first, it means that we, uh, we must guarantee that the system is serverless, right? People do not just, uh, do not, uh, should, should only, uh, should pay your system in a pay, uh, should, should pay the little vendors in a pay as you go model. In this model, we can better might optimize the resource utilization rate. And this was achieved by uh, adopting the popular uh, decoupled compute and storage architecture. So compared to the uh, to compared to the traditional coupled compute and storage architecture, we can actually leverage the compute and storage. Uh, we we can leverage the uh, decoupled the the, the 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 cloud architecture, modern cloud architecture, by ma ma managing the EC2 instance and the S3 services independently. Thanks to the modern cloud infrastructure, if you find that we need more, uh, more computation resource, the only thing we need to do is to purchase more machines. And if we run out of uh, storage resource, then actually we, we, we never need to worry about that because S3 can scale out independently and automatically. And the other way we can reduce the cost is to reduce operation cost. Because what we know is that well, actually the engineers are pretty expensive. So by reducing the operating cost, people, uh, the team can have less, uh, actually can, can have fewer DevOps or DevOps engineers so that we can, cost, uh, can save a lot of money. And about the accessible, okay, so for this we'll talk, probably I will not mention too much about the accessible, accessible because well, you are all engineers and you know that, okay, uh, what open source means and how popular the open source can be and how valuable the uh, running a system that is under Apache, uh, Apache license could be. And, uh, okay. And we also firmly believe that, okay, the, the world, Many people say that the software is actually the eating, eating work, right? But in fact, we also believe that the open source will eat, will, uh, eat the software world. And just a look, uh, look at the valuations of these companies, uh, look at the valuations of the closed source companies and the open source companies, you see the trend, right? Open source companies actually grow much faster than those um, closed source companies. So what about what about performance? Well, do we really care about performance? And so we have already done a lot to re, uh, to reduce uh, to optimize for performance. For example, we actually implement a very small cache to uh, to reduce the cache miss rate, and we also uh, we also implement redesign the storage base. Uh, 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 we actually redesigned the storage layout based on the access pattern. But the purpose of the building of this system is not to build a, build a system that is 10 times or 100 times faster than the existing system. The purpose of building this system is to make sure that where the system operation, uh, the system is cheap enough so that where everyone can fall for it, can, can benefit from the stream processing. And design, uh, okay, so, Ask when Snowflake or Databricks enter the streaming market, and what's the difference between our system and the Snowflake or Databricks? Well, to answer this question, it's basically to answer what's the, what's the difference between all in one system and the best, uh, best of breed system. Well, we believe that's okay. Well, we're trying to make sure that through the streaming workload, uh, well, to process the streaming data, we can offer 
the cheapest solution and most affordable solution, and that uh, that is easy uh, that is easy to use for anyone. But if you want to use an all-in-one system, then I mean this kind of thing cannot be fully guaranteed. Okay, so to conclude, well, modern data stack is, uh, is definitely more than a buzzword, and we believe that real time is the future. And that's why we are building a new database system called the Rising Wave that can uh, that can uh, uh, that, that can make sure that where you can you can build a real, real time applications at super low cost. We want to make sure that uh, we want to make sure that we we'll follow the design principle of simple to make sure that the simple uh, the system is simple affordable. That's all my talk. Any question? Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Um, my question is, uh, uh, we are a small company. We are um, currently using the data back to CMR as able to do the data cost the dashboard. And maybe in future, we can uh, scenario to the real time the more real time scenario or some real time monitor or some real time strategy to do some you know, logic according to the data. Uh, but not, uh, our scenario is uh, we don't have not very much uh, critical people. Maybe we have just uh, only one peer and the two uh, developer and uh, only can drive in the person to. Do some each year based on the data the schema. And uh, that's why we kind of using EMI and Tableau. And then, if we want to use the driving way as to for such real time scenario, do you think is we can learn quickly? Otherwise, we have to maybe using some module in the database because we already do that. This is the question. Oh, so, so what's your question? So the question is, uh, as we have a small team uh, in a small company, if we want to do the rising wave as so for some real time scenario, is that easy for us for you to Well, I think well, it's pretty easy to uh, for you to to use rising wave. That's why I know that's right. If you want to use Python, you have to learn the programming language right, right? And uh, if you find this all there, yeah, probably you do not know how to use Python, right? But actually, I that's really it's it's actually a learning learning secret is much simpler than than learning Python. So that's okay. Um, if you want to use some kind of um uh yeah software like like Rising Wave, I think it, yeah it, yeah the, the learning curve is actually not very high. Yeah, it's pretty actually pretty low. Um, actually, I know. Actually, I also know that well, there are some startup working on the like, uh, like providing the Python-based uh, uh, streaming systems. But well, I mean that's um, more for the data scientists because well, they, they are some scientists really want love to use Python. But uh, I mean, if they, uh, if some if people some some people are data analysts probably they do not know how to use Python, so they will probably choose uh, to use SQL database systems. Yeah. So back to your question, I think that's okay. Probably, uh, yeah, you yeah, definitely want to have a try, yeah, to try a system and just to make sure, uh, to, to see how it's a single mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. Can see the audience based, based on Google Cloud or AWS, how you have your own. Yeah, yeah, we, we have the AWS support as well, yeah, as uh, at the current stage, and uh, uh, for Google Cloud, probably next year. Yeah, but, but for us, well, I don't really think that we're migrating from AWS to Google Cloud. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, around Google Cloud service would be a problem. So, yeah, I think we will have that. On prem, um, so on prem, we can talk about that. Well, we have that. Well, I mean, it's I mean, it's the, I mean, it's it's a, it's open source project. So definitely, if you want to deploy on your own, that's that's not a problem. Okay, yeah. So, um, yeah, you can you can just check out. Because in um, we have quite the um, intel also have communication with the company and also they promote the core version, but sometimes they also want to try the community version first and uh, they get some enterprise version. 
Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, actually, actually, to be honest with all the other cloud vendors, uh, yeah, definitely want to sell their cloud, uh, yeah, cloud platforms, right? <laughs> but what we saw is that they actually, um, both, um, yeah, many users, have, yeah, at least many users really want to try it on brand version first to make sure that's what they, it, yeah, it satisfies the, yeah, their requirements, right? So, yeah, definitely we can we can have a we can just apply yeah we have a little question in mind so it's been very nice while video for you um mm -hmm. on uh shall we use regular to build your time warehouse that's that's a, <laughs> that's definitely a very challenging <laughs> question well so to build a real time data warehouse, well, it totally depends on how complex really your, your your product is, right? I mean, if your product is like okay, um, storing yeah one one petabyte of data, probably at current stage we, we um yeah we haven't tried it yet because well the the focus of our system is not to to compete against Snowflake or Redshift. We are actually trying to be part of the modern data stack. So yeah, I've not tried it yet, yet, but it will totally depend on the project. And he's wondering if or it's mostly or only for ad hoc analysis. So we have ad hoc about yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's that's all for right. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I'm gonna try and see this.